So maybe you're getting an Xbox Series X soon, or maybe you're getting the Sony PlayStation 5. Maybe you're getting both. But should you get a new TV to go with these next-gen consoles? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and yeah, we're gonna run down the best gaming TVs that you can buy right now to go with these next-gen consoles that are coming out. We're also gonna take a look at whether that's really a smart move right now. We'll do that a little bit later in the video, but right now, let's cover the reasons why you might want to get a new TV to go with the new gaming consoles. And it really comes down to the new capabilities these next-gen consoles bring. Now, maxed out at their very best, we're talking about very lofty expectations here, we could be looking at up to 4K resolution with up to 100 120 frames per second, variable refresh rate, HDR, and in some cases, 10-bit color. So that sounds amazing. But the fact of the matter is, it's very unlikely that you're gonna get all of that at once out of these next-gen consoles, at least in the early days. Developers need time to harness the potential of these machines and start producing games that could really drive them at their maximum capabilities. So it's not so much that we're looking for 4K resolution at 120 hertz. Maybe the real money maker is 4K at 60 FPS with variable refresh rate. Or we could be talking about 1440p at up to 120 frames per second if that is your priority. Faster refresh rate versus higher resolution. But no matter what your priorities are, there are quite a few TVs that can enable some of these features. The problem is, it's pretty hit or miss across manufacturers and even across models within those manufacturers what you're gonna get. Some of them have lots of HDMI 2.1 ports. Some only have one. Some maybe have two. We're talking about OLED versus QLED and which one you should go for there. So let's break it down on a manufacturer by manufacturer basis and see what we've got going on. Let's start with Sony. A couple of different reasons. One, they make the PlayStation 5, so Sony's an obvious choice, right? But the other reason is that they only have two models that support these high-end features that we're talking about today. One is the ridiculously expensive Z8H. I'm just gonna put that on a shelf. If you can afford it, go for it. But the one we should be talking about right now is the Sony X900H. Now, the firmware update that enables some of these HDMI 2.1 features is just now starting to roll out as we record this video. And it should be completed, hopefully, by the end of this year. That's really up to Sony. I can't tell you when it's gonna be complete. But we are seeing some updates happening. Ports number three and four will support variable refresh rate, but not free sync and 4K up to 120 hertz. And again, I think it's more important that you get the variable refresh rate as opposed to shooting for the moon with the 4K 120 FPS. Plus, it also has the advantage of being a really solid TV. It looks gorgeous, it runs Android TV well, it's just a solid pick across the board, and it's not too expensive. Now let's talk about Samsung for a minute and their QLED line of TVs. Take your pick from QLED. You can get one HDMI 2.1 capable port out of any of the QLED models and there are a bunch of them. The Q60, Q70, Q80, Q90, Q800, and Q900 TS. All of them will have just one port. And that's where you have to start making your decision. Sure, these TVs will do very well. You'll get variable refresh rate once again, up to 4K 120 out of them. They have a really good game mode that auto engages. All the stuff that you would really want for the next gen consoles, but only in one port. So if you plan on getting both consoles, or if you have a more elaborate home theater setup and you want to use eARC to get sound to your receiver or sound bar, you might want to reconsider. Just having the one port, not super helpful right now. That's Samsung, let's talk about TCL now. Right now, you can buy the six series TV. Later down the road, they'll have the eight series, right around the same time the gaming consoles come out. But let's talk about the six series right now. This is a particularly enticing TV because it's got solid picture quality to begin with. It's a Roku TV. And on the gaming front, it has a THX certified game mode, which looks fantastic. The colors are accurate. It's just a really solid game mode. Plus, it'll do 120 FPS at 1440p. Okay, so a little bit of a limitation there or 4K at 60 frames per second. So again, priorities depend 
depends on you. Variable refresh rate is supported as is HDR. So we're looking at a really solid option with the TCL if frames per second is your priority over resolution and you don't need to have it all. Later with the 8 series, we might see something different, but right now I'm gonna hedge my bets and say that for most folks who are looking to get a next gen console and already spending a chunk of change, the 6 series is the most sensible option from TCL this year. Now let's talk about Vizio, which I feel like offers the most options for the most people. You can get into the P-Series Quantum. That'll be the least expensive option. The P-Series Quantum X, which is even brighter with popular HDR, or you could be looking at the Vizio OLED. In any case, at any size, these TVs are gonna offer more than one HDMI 2.1 port to support up to 4K 120, VRR, and HDR gaming. That's pretty comprehensive. So for the most options, look at Vizio with those three series. We just talked about Vizio OLED. Now let's talk about LG OLED because LG's OLEDs offer four HDMI 2.1 ports in their TVs. Obviously the most capable of all the different brands that we've talked about right now and the most versatile. Also tend to be some of the more expensive models as well. But I really think you should be looking at LG's C10 OLED. This is where price to performance makes the most sense. Four HDMI ports, as I mentioned before. The only limitation here is that LG's HDMI 2.1 ports max out at 40 gigabits per second, which is weird because last year it went all the way up to 48 gigabits per second. Now there's a lot of people arguing about whether it's necessary to have all 48 gigabits per second worth of bandwidth. And right now I'd say no, but later on down the road, maybe in two or three years when developers are really taxing these machines and sending a lot of information down that HDMI cable, yeah, you might want to have it then. So I'll leave that up to you. But if you're looking for something really excellent right now, the LG C10 OLED is an excellent pick. Now let's talk about OLED in general. There are a lot of people concerned about burn-in, and I understand that especially with gaming because a lot of games have static head-up displays or bugs on them that never move. And if you play the same game for like five or six hours every day for four or five months, I would say I'm guessing there, but that's the kind of taxing gaming that you would have to do in order to generate burn-in. And so I do understand if you're concerned and you don't want to risk it at all, then don't look at an OLED. Look at one of the other LED-based TVs that we just discussed. The other problem with OLEDs is that they have trouble coming out of black. So if you're a competitive gamer, you play really dark games, you are relying on excellent shadow detail and not just pitch-perfect blacks, then an OLED may not be right for you. Otherwise, I'm really into OLED picture quality and there is no faster response time from a TV panel Panel than an OLED panel. So you've been warned, if you're super worried about burn-in, maybe do something else. Otherwise, if you game like most folks do, you're probably gonna be just fine. Okay, so you're set on getting a new TV to go with your new gaming console. Now you know what you should be looking at. But for those of you on the fence, what are the reasons you might not want to buy right now? Well, I think we just covered quite a bit there with all these different manufacturers different models, having different capabilities. It's a confusing buying season. Plus, this is really new stuff. I know that both the manufacturers of TVs and the game consoles are testing these things together, and they're telling me that they work great. But we haven't really tested these TVs ourselves to know what their limitations might be. We might discover something new that we're not anticipating. Also, 2021 is coming, and with it will come more TVs with these HDMI 2.1 capabilities probably at lower prices. In general, prices will go down from year to year. So there will be more options next year after this stuff has been tested. And who knows, maybe they'll even boost even more capability. So I would say if you're not in a rush, you don't want to be an early adopter, you don't want to run that risk, and you're okay with waiting, then definitely wait. We'll have even better options next year. But if you're in a hurry, you're just too excited, and you want to get a new TV to unlock what these game consoles can do, now you know which TVs you should be looking at. Thanks, as always, for watching, everyone. Where do you sit? Are you going to wait, or are you going to get a new TV now? And if so, which one? Leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and as always, visit digitaltrends.com for the latest tech news and reviews.